Hello and welcome to the Hertfordshire and Essex A-Level Photography Induction. Today you're going to find out a bit more about the course and the department and you're also going to have a taster lesson. So this is our team. We have Mrs Quirk, she is our fantastic head of department, currently on maternity leave but she'll be back next year. Mrs Charles teaches art, photography and textiles. This is me, Mrs. Winters, and I teach art and photography, and I'm going to do your taster lesson today. We'll have Miss Ashton from September, teacher of art and photography, and of course we have our wonderful and lovely art and photography technician, Miss Falkman. She's a very talented photographer, and she makes really fantastic photographic installations and still life setups for us to photograph, and I always love them. So that's us. And this is our lovely art department. We're very lucky and we have three art rooms, a photography studio and a separate sixth form art studio. We have Mac computers and a computer room with PCs very close. We've got scanners and printers and all the computers run Adobe Creative Suite programs such as Photoshop, Premiere Pro, um, you will be taught lots of great Photoshop creative techniques in the course, so lots to look forward to. Our photo studio is fully equipped with lighting, backdrops, reflectors, colour gels, everything you need to take great photographs. We also have cameras, various lenses and tripods, and I'll talk a little bit more about equipment again later. So you'll gain and develop a lot of skills from A-level photography. It is an art subject, so you'll learn creative and technical processes. You'll learn all the technical stuff, how best to use your camera, but also how to create art photography, so you'll learn and gain both technical and artistic skills. And lateral thinking, which is so important. You'll learn critical analytical skills, analysing the work of other photographers and your own work. You'll develop teamwork skills, discuss your ideas with other photography students and your teachers, which will build your confidence and more importantly, your artistic autonomy, as you will be making decisions about your own artwork, which is quite different to how you might have worked at GCSE. You have so much freedom and so you will develop time management and self-motivational skills as well. Your main project will be your choice, so I will talk a bit more about that part of the course later on. As well as being taught technical skills, Photoshop skills and how to use your camera, you'll get to use this in reality when we go on our art and photography trip to Cambridge. Obviously, we are hoping to run the trip this year. When it will be, will be to be confirmed. Um, but it's a great part of the course that we've always enjoyed. We'll visit the botanical gardens where you can hone your macro close-up photography skills. And we also take the photographs and enjoy the architecture and museums of Cambridge. So. Let's hear from one of our current photography students about why photography A-level is so great. Hello, I'm Kellyanne and I study A-level photography at Hearts in Essex. I chose to study photography because I really wanted a creative subject in which I could explore. And I've been at Hearts in Essex since year seven, so the transition between GCSE and A-level was quite easy for me as I knew the school and people there. My favourite part of this course is really the freedom it gives you. You can go in any direction you want. At the beginning of the course, we had a section where we were taught loads of techniques and I really enjoyed learning editing techniques that I never knew existed. The advice I would give people who want to study photography at Hearts in Essex is get your camera and go out the house and really explore what you want to take photos of because this really helped me. Thank you, Kellyanne. So our students have gone on to some really fantastic higher education courses, 
And here are a few great examples. So, things to think about for photography a level. It's taught in the art department as a creative art course. So it's not a purely technical course. It's not a qualification in commercial photography. We employ an art slash mixed media approach. Um, but photography is the main media. It's your tool for making great art. We do teach you how to take photographs, how to use a manual DSLR, so no previous technical photographic knowledge is needed at all. You could just love taking photographs and start, and we'll show you how to really get the best out of the camera and turn your photos into more than just a snapshot, but into art. We do have cameras, lenses, all the equipment necessary to take great photographs. But it is essential that you get your own DSLR camera, as most likely you'll find interesting subject matter to take photographs of outside of school, at home. So having your own camera will be really useful. You don't need lots of gadgets and gizmos. You can borrow items from an apartment on a short-term basis. But having your own camera means so much more freedom for your photo shoots. Okay, so the A-level course is divided up into two units for assessment via a exam board EDUCAS. The first unit is your coursework project, this one. This is called the Personal Investigation, which is a project that you'll spend approximately a year developing. So you choose the topic or area of focus that will give you enough interest and stuff to get your teeth into over the whole year. This is that artistic autonomy that I was talking about earlier. You decide a theme that provides enough scope for investigation for a whole year. In this, you will also complete a written element called the personal study. This is an essay that links to your chosen practical theme. And we will help you and support you through that essay writing um, element. Your coursework consists of this written part, and your practical work will take the form of photography journals or sketchbooks with all your photo shoots, creative experiments, and you'll most likely fill several sketchbooks over the course. Unit two is the exam paper set by the exam board, which will have about 12 different possible starting points. You will choose one and you create a project covering all the assessment objectives. We'll talk about what they are next with a 15 hour exam at the end. You'll have access to the computers and maps during the exam and any art materials that you might need. The photography A-level structure and assessment is the same as art. So if you have completed an art or photography GCSE, these may seem familiar to you. The first assessment objective a01 is all your research into artists, photographers, culture, context. A02 is creative experimenting, using different media and techniques, and refining and changing, modifying things as you go to develop your projects. A03 is your reflective recording. So recording your thoughts by annotating sketchbooks, recording ideas and observation through drawing, and taking photographs, of course. A for your personal, meaningful, fantastic outcomes. So final pieces, basically. So the structure of the course and the way that the course runs. In year 12, we start off with a skills foundation, where we teach you how to use a camera, how to creatively edit your photos. We do lots of workshops on different photography techniques in camera and in post using Photoshop or other kind of creative manipulation of your photography. Then term two is where your personal investigation and your chosen personal study starts, where you choose the theme, discussion, tutorials with us will help and support you with this. This course up project continues into year 13, with a hand in halfway through the year. 
but it lasts the whole year. Then you start with the externally set assignment, your exam project, with the final exam at the end of year 13. So we're hoping that we get to run life drawing. We're intending to do that for the art course this year. And photography students can join in with that. It's an optional extra. It's something that's really beneficial for anyone that wants to study art. Beyond the sixth form, it's the sort of thing that admission chooses for architecture, art, and photography courses find really great in their portfolios. So equipment and materials we talked about in DSLR camera, getting a manual camera is really important for you to do your work independently. You will get a chance to buy things like sketchbooks for your photo journals and photographic paper from the department. We all want to have some different art media, whatever kind of fits your theme and what you want to investigate at home as well. You will have access to the entire art department so you can use any of the materials that any art or photography student can use. Okay? So, at the end of the year, you will have your work exhibited in school where it's examined by the external moderator. It's also a great celebration and a chance for your friends and family to see and enjoy your work and your hard work and your fantastic outcome. So, we talked about how photography is an art course, not just about taking lovely photographs, but here are some really great examples about how to use and how to possibly use different media to create great art photography. You could use embroidery, fabrics, textiles, paint, collage, paint media to create 3D pieces, installations, photo transfer, even origami, some really beautiful editing techniques. So the possibilities are endless. Usually, we would be in the palm of your photography induction, using our great equipment and the studio. Um, we'd be doing hands-on workshops in things like light painting or bokeh, great fun photographic techniques. Obviously, we're not able to do that this year, but don't worry, we'll get a chance to do it in the course. Just thought I'd leave this here in case you have a manual camera already and you fancy having a go at you. This is where the fun begins. We are going to make a photo collage using mixed media inspired by one of these artists. I've included some more slides with the artist names so you can choose from them after this. The first thing that you'll need to do is gather your materials that you think you might want to use. So it's a nice thick paper, preferably A3 cartridge paper, but whatever you have at home, even a canvas would work. Any magazines for source photos. Ideally, you would use your own photos in your photo collages, um, but for a quick, quick creative response today, magazines, scraps of decorative paper, newspapers or images that you have found online will be great for this. I have included some resource sheets after the artists with some of the more vintage elements you might find hard to find in magazines just in case you want to use them. Other materials that you might want are some kind of acrylic paint or watercolours, paint brushes, Definitely a glue stick or even some masking tape or sticky tape, anything for sticking. Some stencils are really nice. I like the kind of letter stamps as well. And any other kind of materials like felt pens, colour pencils for adding into kind of drawing onto your um, collage afterwards to extend it. If you haven't got a water pot, like just a kind of lid of something or yogurt pot for a water pot, but yeah, any materials that you've got at home will do. So, Rauschenberg. 
You can pause these slides when you see something you like. Um, or just print out and have just a good look for inspiration. Rauschenberg is great for painted elements and some abstract shapes. I really like the wiggly colours and the little people in these ones. You can use coloured paper to cut out strips and have some fun here. Stesica uses old film stars and postcards. So if you've got holiday and fashion magazines, that'd be great for this one. Belufus has got lots of nice illustrative kind of drawn elements, um, which I really, really like. It'd be great for a photo and kind of illustrative collage. I just love all the birds and the vintage ephemera in these ones. So these are the resource sheets for the collage. Um, you can pause and print off some of these if you want to use them in your collages. So after you've got all your materials together, gather out all of the images that you want to use um, and kind of spread them out over your working area so you can see them. Um, you can have the artist's images up on the screen or print it out and have it in front of you to refer to as you're making. Um, so cut out lots of different things from magazines that you think might be good to include. You don't need to have them precisely cut out at this point. Um, you can trim them with more detail later on. Firstly, have a go at just moving a few of the bits that you cut out in the images around on your paper before you stick it down. So you can try out different combinations and think about what kind of composition is going to be interesting and work nicely in response to the artist. I've made two examples for you to watch. The first one is a response to Rauschenberg with paint and stencils. It's a time-lapse video, so you can watch it through or you can pause it as it goes along. These are some of the images I was responding to. Here we go. So lay out some of the pictures that you're thinking about using. Find them out when you want to put them. And when you're happy, start kind of taping them down or sticking them down into place. You kind of move them around until you're happy with where they go and then stick them down. And Rauschenberg uses a lot of paint, some Painting on with acrylic paint with a paintbrush and a palette knife, getting that nice painterly effect that Rauschenberg has. Taking some colour. Just go with it. Like, have some fun with the colour in a way that you apply the paint quite loosely. You need to do some stenciling. Okay, so ways you could extend your collage is using the stenciling further to get those kind of abstract shapes or lettering that Rauschenberg uses. I've done some um, numbers, stencils coming in on the left hand side, and also some lettering down the right hand side. I did it with a fine liner and then just smudged it with the kind of wet paintbrush to get that painted effect. I've got a few other little stencil shapes in there. So there's my Rauschenberg response. The next one is my response to Philippers, and the first video, just get all your images that you think you might want to use. I, I cut out quite a few for this. So just first of all, have a go laying things out, trying out where you want to go before you stick anything down. I've just done this on a loose piece of paper, not sticking anything down yet. 
kind of trimming down the pictures as I want them. And trying to put things out. A nice wash of acrylic in the background to get that washy effect that the artist has, like a kind of vintage tea stain effect. You could use a tea bag if you want to, and then brush over it so it's got some nice textural rough marks. Okay, then get your pieces and start to lay them out. You stick them down where you're happy. You put quite a lot of glue on the back, but just don't stick them down really firmly to begin with. Just place them where they are so you've got the edges kind of curled up so you can tuck things under if you want to, put a bird underneath his thumb. You can move things around and kind of slide them into position when you're happy with where they are. You can kind of stick it down a little bit and tuck things underneath. Add in some extra bits. So to extend this further, I used some of the artist's techniques of adding in some dotted lines and some circles of colour around some of the photo elements in the collage. I've added in washes of colour around here and there and kind of dabbed the textural paint. And also used as a projector to do some kind of little dotted illustrative marks and coloured things in with colour pencil and some nice kind of lettered stamping. So it can be anything that you want it to be. Look at the artist, think about like what they do, how they add their colour, what kind of shapes and lines they include, and have some fun with it. So these are my two responses, the two different artists. So I hope you have a lot of fun doing this activity. You can pause as you go, you can go back and print things out if you want to. And you can watch those time-lapse videos again if you need to. So if you have fun and you're thinking about doing photography for A-level, we have transition packs on the website. If you go to the sixth form section, you'll see all the different subjects. You can print out these different activities to do with photography. Some of them are photographic. Some of them are like photo collaging again. Even kind of having fun with taking close-up pictures or uh, taking, finding things to take photos of different shapes or even letters. So, hopefully you have fun with that, and hopefully you enjoyed today's induction lesson, and hope to see you in September. Thank you.